Well, welcome back again to Church at Home with the Common Ground Congregation of Butler Church. My name is Scott Holman, and I'm a pastor with Butler Church, and I'm so glad to welcome you to our service, to welcome you into a time of worship. And that is what we really consider this time. It is, it is a time of worship set aside to pray, to sing, to look into God's Word. And, and today I'd also invite you to consider what it means to worship through giving. We haven't made a big emphasis of it as we've been online these last number of months, but I want to just first say how uh, grateful we are as a church, as leaders of the church. Our council reviews the finances and the giving of the church on a regular basis, and we're blown away at the generosity of our church and the willingness and commitment there is to giving and to worshiping God in that way. And so I want to just say thank you for those that have given in the midst of, of strange days and, and difficult days. Thank you for your giving and for, for being faithful uh, to the Lord. And we really believe that is what, what our, our giving is. Our offerings are an act of worship. And so I want to encourage you, if you haven't had an opportunity in a while, to consider giving uh, as an act of worship, not uh, to meet a budget, not to uh, meet an obligation or, or a sense of guilt, uh, but to give as an act of worship and submission to the Lord. And so we invite you to consider that. Uh, today as, as part of your worship uh, to set aside funds for that. And, and I always like to tell people, I, I believe and we believe so strongly in the act of giving as an act of worship that if you feel in any way that it's just us as a church wanting your money, please don't feel that way. And please feel free to give to a ministry or church of your choice, but give, give as an act of worship. It's an important part of that element of our faith. We also want to let you know uh, before we get started that uh, we're working hard at plans to, to bring ourselves back on campus for regular worship together. And so our leadership teams are working hard at planning and preparing. And you may even receive a phone call in the next week or two just to, to hear from you your input, uh, your availability. It's going to take a team effort uh, to meet again on campus uh, because we won't be able to meet necessarily like we did before. Uh, there is no returning to normal. There is only a new normal, as we say too often. Uh, and there's new opportunities for new things, but we're going to have to lean in and serve and work together to make those things happen. But it is our desire and it's what we are working for as pastors and leaders of the church uh, to be back on campus and worshiping together, initially outdoors uh, and then moving indoors that is it, as we are given clearance by health officials and government officials. We want to honor God. We want to honor uh, our leaders in that way. And we want to love one another by keeping one another safe. And so we worship today online uh, as an act of worship to keep one another safe. Uh, we'll do this at a distance, but we'll come near to God together. So I invite you to bow with me in prayer, and then we'll take a moment to sing and to worship him in that way. Would you bow with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come into your presence once again, to worship you, to consider what it means for you to be King of Kings and Lord of Lords, to reign over us, to be a loving Heavenly Father who guides us and directs us. God, may we pause in this moment in the songs, in the prayer, in your word. Let us pause, put life on pause, our thoughts, our fears, our worries, our excitements, and, and all of our anticipation for what's ahead. God, may we lay all of that at your feet and listen and hear from you. May you be blessed as we, as we worship you. May you be glorified in our worship. And Father, we, we submit this time to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountains I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. 
the work is finished, the end is written, Jesus Christ, my living This morning, we just want to exalt you, God of gods, Lord of lords, King of kings. You are our Father, and we are so grateful to you for being whatever we need. Thank you. Thank you for answering our prayers. Thank you for being with us when we are going through trials, being with us these days. Thank you for what you have done for us just in this past week. Lord God, help us to trust you enough 
that we can build our lives on you so your kingdom may be reflected here on earth. May your kingdom come, Lord Jesus. Help us to let go of things that don't let us reflect you. Baggage that gets in the way of being that reflection in your kingdom on the earth. God, today we pray for the ones who lost homes and loved ones in the fires. And, ah, oh, Lord Jesus, we lift them up to you. And the firefighters who are there for long shifts, Lord Jesus, bring them closer to you. Help them to draw on strength from you when they're afraid or when they're so tired. Thank you for the ones who are helping in so many ways, all the people who have been dislodged. Yeah, Lord, thank you. Lord, we pray for those who are lonely, who can't get out, who can't see their loved ones as they would love to. Lord, be with those. Put your arms around them. God, be with those who are ill, those who are suffering. We lift them up. God, be with the teachers, the students, the tutors, as this is a, such an unusual way of learning and not an easy one for anyone. God, just be there for those who need you in their times of study and learning. God, be with Ricky and Karen. Ricky and Karen Sanchez. That the message will shout out from Monkey Mountain. That it will praise you to the skies from the Abundant Life Home. Yes that your message will shout to the neighbors. And Lord, our church and its leaders in this time, so many decisions to make, so many new paths that they have to go down. God, just give them wisdom and the strength to do that and the courage to try new things. God, you are all we need. You are enough. And so we thank you and praise you for your constant presence with us. All these things we bring to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen.
Well, we've talked about it often over the last few weeks and months, just how difficult life has been these last six months. As we've dealt with so many different things, uh, we've been through so many challenges and continue to be. Uh, but I'm thankful, at least for a little silver lining, a little bit of a uh, ray of sunshine. Uh, literally, we've had a little bit of a clearing of the air, but for me and my family, it's, uh, it's been good to see sports on TV again. At least for a couple of us, it's been really good in our house to be able to watch basketball, uh, NBA playoffs, WNBA playoffs, to watch football return. Uh, it's, it's a welcome break and, and it's a welcome distraction uh, to cheer on a team uh, and to, to see something new and, and fresh and, uh, and to return to something almost like normal. And if you're like me, you're a fan. You, you're a fan, at least in, uh, of some team, whether it's a casual fan or, or maybe more of a hardcore fan. Uh, I don't know if you've come across fans like this before, but have you come across the fan that talks about their team, whatever their team is, whoever their team is, whatever sport it is, uh, they refer to their team and the efforts on the field and their efforts as a fan, and they say, we. And they say, we have a good chance of winning the championship this year, or we really had a tough game, or have you ever heard people talk like that? I, I have, and I've always wondered, well, were you playing the game? Who's, who's we? Are you on the team? I, I, and I've certainly, I've been a fan. I've been a fan, a, a Laker fan for many years uh, and, and enjoyed following them from the 80s and 90s and, and watching James Worthy. He was my, my player. Uh, there was Magic and Kareem and all of those players, but I go old school. I, and I, I loved uh, James Worthy. I had his poster on my wall for a long time. But I've never been so hardcore that I felt like I was part of the team in that way that I would say, we. And today I want us to consider what does it mean to be followers of Jesus and to ask ourselves the question, are we fans of Jesus or are we family? Are we merely fans who are from the outside, from the, from the sidelines cheering on Jesus and his cause? Are we, are we merely fans or are we committed? Are we, are we connected in such a way that we're more than fans? We are on the team. We are in the game. We are, we are participating day in and day out with Jesus and his family. That we are, we are actively participating in, in life on the team of Christ and his kingdom and his purposes. Or are we merely fans? that say we, but in reality have very little bearing on what's going on in God's kingdom and, and how it's playing out in this world. See, Jesus, I believe, came to this earth not to, to grow a fan base, but to grow a family. Jesus isn't interested in collecting likes on Facebook. He's, he's interested in growing relationships heart to heart. Jesus didn't come to garner praise and fans and, and people to cheer him on. He, he came to draw us into a relationship and a transformational relationship, a, part a, a partnership, a, a form of teamwork that comes together, a melding together of our lives with his that radically transforms us for the good, for the greatest good. In fact, to bless us tremendously, I believe is God's desire and what he came and sent Jesus on earth to do. And I believe that's what he's been pointing out in the Sermon on the Mount as we've been studying that. He's been revealing to us, his people, his followers, what it means to, to be on his team, to be more than just a fan, but to, to be an active participant in the kingdom of God and in the way of Jesus. And as we've been going through the sermon, we find ourselves towards the end in Matthew chapter 7. We, we see that, that Jesus has been kind of moving us to a fork in the road. He's literally been giving us one decision or the other. As we consider his teaching in this sermon and consider the way that he is calling us, he's, he's giving us a choice and he's, he's asking us to choose. Last week, we looked at the fact that he says you, you can go one of two directions in your life. You can go through the narrow gate and the difficult path, the way that leads to life in him, or you can go through the broad gate and the wide highway that leads to destruction that is the direction of this earth. We can choose those things. 
we can choose our path one way or the other. And in a sense, he's saying you can go on and, and perhaps be a fan or you can actually buy in and join the team and get into the nitty gritty with, with him, with Jesus and have a positive, amazing effect, not only on your life, but on the lives of others. And as Jesus concludes his sermon, he, he keeps on bringing us to this choice one way or the other, which will you choose? And today's passage is no different. And so I wanna invite you to turn to Matthew chapter seven, uh, beginning in verse 21. It says this, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. Only those who actually do the will of the Father in heaven will enter. On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. I can't imagine the weight of these words to, to come to the end of my life, to enter into the presence of Jesus, to, to enter into that judgment of, of days and, and to have Jesus say to me, I could not imagine the, the pain that this would invoke in me to have him say, who are you? I don't even know you. Get away from me. You who break God's laws. Can, I can't imagine a more punishing blow. My ears perk up when I read this, when I hear this word. More than that, the hair on the back of my neck perks up to say, wow, could it come to that? That Jesus would not know me? And listen, Jesus says this, if you look closely in this passage, Jesus says this not to people who are cursing his name, not to people that are perhaps in this life claiming to be atheists, to, to, to curse his name and have nothing to do with him. It, he's not saying it to the atheist. He's not saying it to the fool who's ignored him and, and, and come to his presence and say, who are you? He's saying this to people who say to him all the right things. They, they call on his name. They say, Lord, Lord. They say all the right things. They, they say that they prophesied in his name. They say that they cast out demons in your name, Lord. It says that they performed. Ah, oh, we performed miracles in your name. They're saying all the right things. They're using the right words. They're talking up their performances. I mean, I mean their actions. All of this in Jesus' name, in the name of the Almighty. But Jesus offers them this crushing judgment. Jesus says, I know you're saying all of this, but who are you? Do I know you? I started talking uh, here about teams and, and being a fan. And it's an interesting thing that happens when, when teams win a championship. They get rings. Oftentimes they, they get championship rings. I don't know where that tradition began. It seems rather silly to me, uh, but that's what happens, especially in the professional teams. They, they'll get a ring uh, and, and it's a celebration, a commemoration of, of their victory, of their championship. And it's a reminder of what they've done, a great accomplishment. And these rings are often passed out at elaborate ceremonies. And, and if you've ever seen these rings, they're just huge and they're gaudy and they've got tons of jewels and, and diamonds and gold. And, and they're just, um, just these things that you couldn't even really wear every day. But they do these big celebrations and they hand these rings out to the team and, and to those that were the coaches and participants in the team. And I can imagine uh, this year, if you will, with me, imagine uh, perhaps my Lakers win the championship this year. Uh, and, and, uh, and let's just say there's, there's gonna be a ceremony in Los Angeles in, in another month or two. And, and I, I, as a fan, say decide I'm gonna go. In fact, I'm gonna make my way into this ceremony. I'm gonna line up behind LeBron and AD. Okay, maybe a little further back from those guys. Maybe I'll, I'll go at the end of the bench and I'll, I'll, I'll get in line because I'm a fan, because we won the championship. 
You can imagine how this would play out as, I, as they hand out the rings and they get to me and I, I'm in the presence of the owner of the team, Jeannie Buss, and I look at her and I'm ready and I hold my hand out, I'm ready for my ring. And, and she looks at me and goes, who are you? And I say, well, I'm Scott. I'm, I'm, I'm a f- huge fan of the Lakers all the way back to Magic Johnson and Byron Scott and Oop to Coop and the Alley Oops and the, and the Showtime Lakers. And, and I, I could recount all the, all the times that the, the team had ups and downs and, and I cheered them on. I really think I had an impact on the game and my cheering really lifted their, I mean, I was never at a game. They're a little expensive. So I, I cheered from home and I'm sure that helped the team, but we won the championship. Where's my ring? And, and, and the owner of the team is just gonna laugh because they don't know me. I didn't, they're thankful for my fandom and, and, and maybe I've bought some souvenirs, but I'm not on the team. They would be confused at my presence there. They'd question who let this guy in. See, the, the rings are reserved for those that were part of the team, that got into the game, and even those that didn't necessarily get into the game but were there day in and day out, who came in early and stayed late, those that, that served the team and helped them in practice, those that, that put in the time and the energy to perfect their craft and to use their gifts to the best of their abilities, those that, that sweat and, and engaged and were part of every bit of that championship run. That's who the ring is for. That, that's who gets recognized. Those that were all in all the time. And Jesus says to his followers, to his would-be followers, I don't want fans. I don't want lip service. I don't want a performance. If you notice in this passage, the list of accomplishments, things they had done for Jesus, for for the Lord. We're all big spotlight type of things. They prophesy, they they told big stories for Jesus. They cast out demons in the name of the Lord. They performed miracles, all these very spotlight-oriented, performance-oriented accomplishments. Jesus warns us, he says, not everyone who calls out to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven can say his name all you want, but if you don't know him, he says, only those who actually do the will of my Father in heaven will enter. Are we, call, are we told to call on the name of the Lord? Yes, we can call on his name. Are we to prophesy? Can we cast out demons? Can we participate in miracles? Yes, yes, and yes. Is that all there is to being a follower of Jesus? No, no, no. It's so much more. It's so much deeper than what the spotlight shines on. It is a 24-7 every day in the shadows, in the valley, and on the hilltop, in plain view and in view of no one but God. It's an all the time, all that you are relationship that transforms you from the inside out. It goes much deeper than our words. It goes much deeper than than any performance or fandom. Jesus doesn't want us to be fans. He wants us to be participants, members of the team. He goes on to say this in Matthew 7, 21, or sorry, verse 24. It says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on a solid rock. Though the rain comes and torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and does, doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against the house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. The lesson comes through loud and clear once again. Jesus is not inviting us into a superficial transformation. His teaching points, his teaching points to, to something much deeper than that. It's, it's more than a show. There were plenty around in Jesus' day and in our day, unfortunately, that put on a really good show. 
but for whom the roots into God, into their life, are so very, very shallow. So when the storms come, they are uprooted, they are adrift, and they are destroyed because their roots don't go very deep. It was all for show. Jesus and his truth and his teachings point to something deeper, something that roots down into the very heart and foundation of who we are. He calls us to something so good and so true that no matter how hard the wind blows, no matter how high the water rises, no matter what mighty wildfire comes ripping through or how thick the smoke gets all around us, that if we hold on to his truth and his way and let it seep into our very foundations, no matter what comes, we will not be shaken. We will not be moved because our God will not be shaken. Our God will not be moved. And so in him, we can say, as the apostle Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, he says, we are pressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but we never abandon God by God. We're never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. Jesus says the house that stands is the one that not only listens to his teaching, but who applies it, who builds their life upon it. Every part and every parcel, every bit of their life is built. That Those that choose to build their life on his teaching will find themselves on sturdy, strong footing. And Jesus has not made this way hidden. His foundation and his truth and his teaching are as clear as they can be. He has not hidden them, his truth from us, and he has chosen to show us and reveal point blank right here in Matthew, his Sermon on the Mount, what it means to have him as our foundation and what it means to live a life that is strong, that is blessed. He says a life of blessing flows to those who are poor in spirit to those that mourn. A life of blessing flows to the humble, to those who hunger and thirst for justice, to those who are merciful, whose hearts are pure, those who are peacemakers, those who are persecuted for living according to the way of Jesus, to truth. Jesus says over and over and over again, this is blessing, this is blessing, this is blessing. And in all of those words, there are a whole lot of storms brewing. It is not easy to be poor in spirit, to be humble, to choose to mourn and to linger with those in pain. It is not easy to be merciful when everyone else is on the attack. It is not easy to remain pure when debauchery reigns. It's not easy to be a peacemaker when everyone's at war. The weather's going to get very stormy when you live according to the kingdom of God and in the way that he has called us to. But in the midst of those storms, we will not be shaken. We will not be moved because our lives are built on the rock that is Jesus, which is the word of God made flesh. Will we follow him? Will we follow through with him? Not just listen to him, but will we be willing to do as he says? Will we be more than just a fan? Or will we be satisfied to merely remain in the stands to cheer on Jesus in the victories and to go home disappointed in the losses? We cannot be satisfied to just come to the game once a week and cheer to get pumped up and excited and then just go home. That's, that's fandom. It's not followership. It's not enough just to, to listen to some of the coaches give some rah-rah speeches on Sunday mornings. We got to get into the game. We have to commit our whole selves to Jesus and to his way. John 10.10 10 says that Jesus came to give us life and to give it to us abundantly, to the fullest. He calls us to obedience in his teaching, to, 
to be obedient to his will and to his way. And the way and the will that he reveals in this Sermon on the Mount is one which is incredibly challenging and in many ways cuts against the grain almost at every turn the way we learn to live in this, in this world. But he calls us to be obedient to his way, not because he wants to make life difficult for us, not because he wants us to perform or to cheer or even to make him look good. He doesn't need our help to look good. He wants us to do these things, to have the fullest, most amazing life possible. He wants us to experience what it is like to help others experience the fullest, most amazing life possible. He wants us to be blessed so that we can be a blessing. Do you want that? Do you want to experience that kind of faith, that kind of life in which in Jesus and a life built on him, no matter what rages around us, whether it's a pandemic, a forest fire, a flood, uh, all, whatever fire or smoke this world wants to throw our way, that you would, you would stand and be firm and be encouraged to have hope and peace and joy and love even in the midst of all of this. Do you want that kind of life, a life that is blessed and that sees other lives blessed through you? then let's be obedient to the call of Jesus. Let's choose today to be all in. Let's not settle for being fans. Let's get into the game. Let's not just show up on the weekend for the big game and, and go home. Let's, let's engage in our faith day after day, moment by moment. Today, I want to I wanna challenge you to be all in. No sidelines, no stands, no days off. Let's be all in with Jesus. Let's lean in to Jesus. Have you felt distant from him lately? Have you felt like he's far off? Take time to go into his presence, to pray and to tell him he feels far off. He is big enough to hear that, and he is near enough to hear that. He will come close. Call on his name. It's not too late to say, Lord, Lord. Call on his name while he can still be found. Before it is the day of judgment, come to him and invite him into your life. Invite him to do work in your life. Lean into Jesus. Lean into his word Consider what it would be to, to read his word every day. And, and don't start with big chapters and chunks and books of the Bible, even just a verse a day. There's some wonderful tools that, that I'd love to connect you with. If you're interested, say so in the comments or, or message us here at the church. And we'd love to connect you with a great reading plan and an opportunity to, to be in the word on a consistent basis, to hear and to know and to understand God's game plan, to understand God's will and his way to understand what it is that Jesus is calling us to. We need to know his word. We need to know Jesus. We need to lean in, not just to Jesus and to his word, but to his people, to his church. Are you connected with someone else who, who's on the team with you, who's working together with you? Anyone who's, who's been involved in a team or, or, or in a sport or, or part of a group that has accomplished a task, know it, it, it is better to work together to get through the hard things together, to, to celebrate the great things together. It is better together. We are better together. And so if you found, especially in these days of, of social distancing, that you found yourself increasingly isolated, I want to get, call on you to, to have the courage to reach out and, and to be willing to be part of a group, a connection. And so again, if, if you're interested in, in maybe participating in a, in a small group or or just maybe would like to talk or chat or, or connect, reach out to us either in the comments uh, on this video or message us through email or through our Facebook account or some way get a hold of us and we would love to connect and chat and, and, and lean in together. Finally, I wanna encourage you to, to lean. We've been talking about leaning in. Can you lean out? Can you love others? 
seek to put faith into action. To be salt and light, as Jesus calls us to, to, to seek justice, to love mercy, to encourage, to, to serve others, to forgive others, maybe to seek forgiveness from others. Be proactive in your faith, to go out of your way to do others as you wish someone would do to you, to do to others what you wish or hope someone would do for you. Look for ways to serve. One of the ways you could serve would, would be to, to participate with us in something like food distribution that happens the first Friday of the month. So coming up in just a little bit in October, an opportunity to serve and, and love our neighbors. But maybe there's other smaller opportunities or bigger opportunities and challenges right there in your own neighborhood. I wanna challenge you to, to consider ways you can love others and, and allow that to be part of your participation, not just once in a while, but all the time to have your radar up and ready to jump in and love others as you would want to be loved, as Jesus has already loved you. Let's do these things together. Let's live this out and let's see God's blessings flow in us and through us and around us as we are faithful and follow Jesus. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you that uh, it's not always easy stuff, Lord, that you don't just tell us what we want to hear, but you push us in ways that are challenging to us, that help us grow and learn and, and become better. And God, you've, you've given us the ultimate gift of, of salvation, of grace, of forgiveness. God, may we grab hold tightly to your mercy and your grace. And may we build off of that mercy and grace and that identity, God, and, and build into, uh, into our lives and build our lives up from that mercy and grace and calling that you've given us into lives that are, are strengthened by you that shine brightly for you, that serve to bless others, that see their lives transformed, that their foundations are, are transformed and their lives are given solid footing and, and blessing. God, may we be faithful. May we live this out powerfully. May we see your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. Amen. We'll have a blessed week. I pray that God finds you in amazing ways, that you follow through and, and listen as he directs your steps, and that we see God's blessings flow in your life and the lives around us. Take care.